Let's create this file simulation effect using Unreal Engine NiagraFX. To get started, we need a few assets from the Unreal Engine Starter Content Pack. To add them to your project, in Content Browser, click Add and select Add Feature or Content Pack. Here you can select Starter Content and import them to the project. We are going to use some materials from this Starter Content. To create Niagara System, right click on Content Browser and select Niagara System. Select Next, add Fountain Emitter and then select Finish to add the system with a Fountain Emitter. I call the Niagara System NS Fire Simulation Tutorial, NS4 Niagara System. Open the Niagara System. Go to Window and select Preview Scene Settings. Here you can toggle on and off the background environment in the preview. I rename the fountain emitter to flames. Set the spawn rate to 50. In initialize particle, I set the min and max lifetime to 0.3 and 0.8. And set the random sprite size to 40 and 60. Under add velocity, I decrease the min and max velocity to 80 and 150. Now our particles are dropping due to gravity. So let's delete gravity force. Increase the drag to 0.5. This will add some resistance to our particles movement. To add some noise to our particles movement, in particle update, click this plus button and add curl noise force module. Set its strength to 100 and noise to 20. In our sprite render module, for the material, search for m underscore fire underscore sub uv material. This material is made out of this 6x6 sprite sheet texture. So, in our sprite renderer settings, under sub uv, set the image size to 6 and 6 and check this blending option. Then in the particle update, add sub uv animation module. Enable these two and set the end frame to 35 because we have 36 sprites in the sprite sheet and since their numbering start from 0, they go from 0 to 35. Select sprite render from here. To animate the sprite size with time, add scale sprite size module and change the curve to something like this. This will change the sprite size based on their age. Now add color module. Click on this arrow and choose color from curve. This will turn our color into a color ramp. Change this ramp to set the flame's color with their edge. You can click on top part of the ramp to add more colors. Bottom markers will control the opacity. So I set the colors to start from white and then go to yellow, orange and finally red. This will give our flames a nice flame look. Drag and drop our Niagara system to the viewport to see it in action. That's it for the flames. So let's move on to create the smoke. Hit Ctrl D to duplicate the flames emitter. Rename it to smoke. Click on this icon to isolate the emitter. We don't need this color module for the smoke. So let's delete that. Change the spawn rate to something like 25 and the lifetime to 0.8 and 1.8. This will make smoke particles last longer than flames. In sprite renderer settings, search for smoke and select m underscore smoke sub uv material from the starter content. Since this material uses 8 by 8 sprite sheet, we have to change few values. Change the sub image size to 8 and 8. And in the sub UV animation, 
set the end frame to 63 because there are 64 sprites in 8 by 8 sheet. In our initialized particle settings, I keep the color same but change its alpha to something like 0.5. Now in the velocity, I increase them to 100 and 150. Also increase the sprite size to 60 and 100. Change the scale sprite size curve to something like this. And also increase the drag to 0.8. In the scale color, I change the alpha curve to go like this. And for the curl noise, increase the frequency to 50. And if you want to use the GPU for these simulations, in emitter properties, change the calculation bounds to fix and sim target to GPU sim. Take the emitter out of isolation, save the system, and just like that, we got our smoke as well. To add those flying fire debris, right click on empty space, add emitter and select fountain. Let's also change this to use GPU. Here I change spawn rate to 60 and lifetime min and max to 0.8 and 1.8. Since these particles need to be very small compared to flames, I set the random sprite size values to 0.2 and 0.8. Delete the gravity force. And in the velocity, change the min and max velocity to 100 and 150. Add a curl noise and set the strength to something like 200 for some extra movements. Also, set the frequency to 25. To add color to these particles, let's copy our color module from flames and paste it here in the particle update. And that's our fire debris, or whatever you call that. Now our fire is generating some heat around it which leads to heat distortions. So, for creating that heat distortion effect, I duplicate flames emitter. Isolate it and rename it to heat distortion. Change it to GPU compute. Delete the color module. Set the lifetime to 0.4 and 0.9 and increase the random size to 50 and 70. For shape location, you can keep the sphere radius at 8 but here I increase it just a bit to 9 and increase the minimum velocity to 100. I change the alpha curve in the scale color module to go like this. In sprite renderer change the material to m underscore heat distortion. In this heat distortion material in order to see the distortion you have to change this first dynamic parameter value to above zero. And another thing is this material does not use any sprite sheet textures, which means here in our render settings, we have to set the sub UV size back to its default value, which is one and one. Untick the checkbox and delete the sub UV animation module. At the moment, we can barely see the distortion since I set the dynamic parameter value to 0.5 in the material. But if you want to control that from the emitter, you can add the dynamic material parameter module. You can do a lot more with it, but here I just set the value to 1. And to see the distortion clearly in the renderer setting, you can change the sort order of the emitters. You can find that option all the way here. In sprite renderer settings. I set this to 1. So we got our heat distortion and one more step to go. If you look at both of these simulations, there is one big difference. The left one is casting light to the ground as it should because it's 
fire. So in order to achieve that light effect, here in the Niagara system, I use our flame emitter and add a new renderer, light renderer. By the way, this only works with CPU sim calculation. So if you have set this to GPU, then you have to change it back to CPU. You can already see the effect just a bit here, but to see it clearly in light renderer settings, I uncheck this use inverse square rule. Now you can see the area this light is casting. I check it back and decrease the radius. In color add, I add 2 to the first slot. This will increase the light cast strength, making it more red. As you can see, our fire simulation is working perfectly. Before we go, let's finish this with a cool feature. Go to Niagara system, pick a good frame of your simulation and click this thumbnail button. And Unreal will use that as our Niagara system thumbnail. If you'd like to see how I created a similar fire simulation effect using Blender simulation node, check this video out. So. I hope you learned something cool, something new, I mean, that's what we like to do. We not only create stuff, we let you create with us. Hit the like button, comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to HelloFX Learn so you won't miss out when the next video drops. Until next time, see you later.